Hey, once again, remember we record our sessions. We post on uh, on our YouTube page, SGNY. Um, today is a very special day because we are back to the beginning. We are going to start studying the Spirit's Book again for the sixth or seventh time. Not exactly sure. Uh, but it's, as I mentioned last week in uh, my presentation, is a book that we've been studying since the opening of SGNY in uh, April 2001. And, uh, and we will continue studying because without it, the rest of spiritism doesn't make any sense if we don't know the basics. Um, so before we start here, on the introduction, and we are going to start the introduction because for us to understand what we are studying, we have to start from the very beginning, from the basics. So the introduction, Kardec goes over some of the expressions, some of the terms used in spiritism, some of the ideas, and uh, some of the origins of where spiritism comes from. And uh, it starts with actually with a question that Paco asked, uh, I believe on Sunday or last week, I don't remember exactly, uh, but uh, we are going to read. Uh, we are going to start item by item. Uh, some items will go, we're reading from beginning to end. Other items will stop in the middle because there are things to go over. But um, a reminder to everyone, we have to start thinking that uh, we don't know anything about spiritism. We are arriving at spiritism and we are starting to build the blocks that will uh, organize our faith system and our belief system and our reason system. So let us you know, not ask questions that uh, do not belong to what we are just studying of the basic concepts because uh, we are going to get there eventually. Of course, we're not going to uh, to refuse to answer questions, but let's try to to be very basic and with the beginnings of uh, uh, of how Kardec presents to us spiritism, because it's really the beginning of spiritism. What Kardec writes here, okay? So, Paco, you're going to read for us. Oh. Okay, yes, of course, of course. Introduction to the study of spiritism. New words are needed to convey new ideas clearly and to avoid the inevitable confusion that ensues from using the same term for expressing different concepts. The words spiritual, spiritualist, and spiritualism each have a given meaning that is specific. To attribute a new meaning to these words by applying it to spiritism merely increases the numerous causes of ambiguity that already exist. In actuality, in actuality spiritualism is the opposite of materialism. Anyone who believes that something more than matter exists inside of us is a spiritualist. But this does not necessarily mean that they believe in the existence of spirits or other, or the communication with the physical world. It is with this distinction in mind that we avoid the use of spiritual and spiritualism and instead use spiritism and spiritism to describe the latter belief. These words indicate their origin and root meaning and have the advantage of being perfectly clear and understandable. Therefore, we reserve the word spiritualism for its commonly accepted meaning and the central principle of spiritism as their relationship of the physical world with spirits or beings that inhabit the invisible world. We refer to the adherents and supported of spiritism as spiritist. The spiritist book contains the principles of spiritism, 
which is generally associated with the spiritualist school, of which it represents one perspective. This is why spiritualist philosophy appears at the top of the title page. So this answers your question, Go right, on. Paco, that uh, you, you had uh, yes, you yes, know, yes. last week. Um, so yeah, very, we call, we, uh, yes, I remember that. Yeah, um, very basic here in the very beginning. New words are needed to convey new ideas clearly and to avoid the inevitable confusion that ensues for using the same term for expressing different concepts. That's why Kardec created the word spiritism to defer it from spiritualism. And he comes here and tells us that uh, spiritualism is just the op op opposite of materialism. Those that believe in the survival of the soul, in the survival of the being, or whatever you want to call it, are spiritualists. Of course, you, you find many um, spiritualists that uh, are call themselves spiritualists and follow different uh, rules and regulations. And you have the spiritualist in church in England, you have the spiritualist church in the US, and within the US you have different spiritualist beliefs. Now, Kardec makes it very clearly that not all spiritualists believe in the existence of spirits, what does he mean by that? That spirit, some spiritualists believe that uh, the soul or whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to call the soul because it makes it easier for us, but we're going to discuss soul in the second in item two. The soul survives the death of the physical body, but not necessarily preserves its individuality. So if it does not preserve its individuality, there are no spirits. And so there are no communications with the physical world from spirits, right? Again, I'm just uh, showing why not all spiritualists believe in the existence of spirits. Most of them, the vast majority, believe in the survival of the soul, okay? But not all of them. So we cannot say that all spiritualists believe in the existence of spirits. The vast majority believe, but not, not all of them. The communication of the with the physical world between spirits and incarnated beings, it's even less. So that's not the vast majority. Some of them believe, and a lot of them do not believe. Uh, or from the, the, from the evangelists, all the communications from the spiritual world are from the devil. From some spiritualists uh, here in this country, all communications from the spiritual world are from evolved spirits. So they do believe in the communication of spirits, but in different formats. Spiritism comes and says that uh, the soul survives the death of the physical body, the soul reincarnates, and this, the spirits communicate with each other throughout the physical world and the spiritual world within the spiritual world. Now, uh, the, again, very important, and uh, it, I know we were in the beginning, but uh, what Spiritism brought to us, and I, I'm reinforcing what I said last week in the presentation, is the explanation of how reincarnation works and how mediumship works. The concepts of reincarnation and mediumship are existed since the beginning of times. I was, um, I, 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 I came across today um, uh, a concept that comes from the Orphic religion, or Orpheus, which was the, the, the founder of this Orphic religion. Orpheus was a um, legendary musician, poet, and prophet in the ancient Greek civilization. And, uh, and he 
thought that the soul and the body are united by a compact uniquely binding in, in on either. The soul is divine, immortal, and aspires to freedom, while the body holds it as prisoner. Death of the physical body dissolves this compact, but only to re-imprison the liberated soul after a short time, for the will of birth revolves inexorably. So the soul continues its journey, alternating between an unrestrained existence and a fresh reincarnation round the wide circle of necessity. Until the soul achieves liberation that it only achieves when it turns to God by piety of life and self-purification. The pure their lives, the higher will be their next reincarnation until the soul has completely completed the spiral ascent of destiny to live forever as a God from whom it comes. Again, this is from ancient Greeks. And you see how much is similar to the concept of reincarnation that spiritism brought to us, right? So reincarnation, it's not something that was brought by spiritism. It was just studied better by spiritism, explained better, and we understand also through spiritism and the complementary literature what is how and what is like in the spiritual world. So we Jean, call ourselves spiritists. Yes, Elmo. Uh, just curiosity. Uh, do you know if the Orpheus is pre or post Socrates by any chance? It's, uh, it's pre Socrates. Pre Socrates. Yes. Uh, actually, it is said that. Uh, Socrates, um, uh, Socrates yeah. brought, yes, but also Aristotle said that Orpheus never existed, but it was a combination of several ancient writers. Very interesting. Um, so it is said that uh, the, the earliest uh, reference to Orpheus is, uh, is found sixth century before Christ. So it's way before uh, Socrates, the yeah. Socrates, yeah. And we are going to talk about Socrates and Plato and Aristotle in a little while also when we go to the second item. Uh, yeah, it's Renato. Yeah, no, just, uh, you mentioned something, just want to clarify, because I missed your lecture last week. So the word spiritus was invented by Kardec, wasn't given to us by the spirits? No, it was created by Kardec, yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, and, you know, and, and again, one thing that I, you know, I mentioned, I think I mentioned last week, it's spiritism is not cardicism, okay? Cardicism is a Brazilian invention to differentiate from the Afro religions that call themselves spiritists without really being a spiritists in the sense that uh, oh, we understand by the teachings of Kardec. Okay, so let's avoid calling ourselves oh. artists. Yes. Philip. Oh, okay. That's good to know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, the Brazilians call themselves okay. spiritists, cardicists, cardicist spiritists, which is a redundancy, right? Because you cannot be uh, one and not be the other if you really exactly. follow the, exactly. the, the, the law, exactly. the, the rule. It is redundant. Philip. Yeah. How do you spell Orphil? Uh, O-R-P-H-E-U-S. And the religion is called Orphic. O-R-P-H-I-C. Thank you. And it first appeared in Thrace, in the northeastern frontier of Greece at... Uh, and, and, and you know, at uh, six, at, it said six before, before. Okay. Um, so, um, again, I repeat what I said last week all spiritists are spiritualists, not all spiritualists are spiritists. So, uh, and Kardec says, this is why spiritualist philosophy appears at the top of the title page. And we are going to go there. So you see here, 
at the top, spiritualist philosophy, the spirit's book containing the principles of spiritism about the immortality of the soul, the nature of spirits and their interactions of, with humankind, moral law, present life, future life, and the fate of humanity. That's what the spiritist covers according to Kardec. Okay. So any, any, any other questions here? So um, now we are going to study a very important concept, which is soul. And we're going to, this is a long item, wow. the item two. So we're going to stop in the middle and we'll go through it. Okay. That's, that's it. <laughs> this is very, okay. Another word that must be defined is soul because it is the cornerstone of every moral belief system and Due to the lack of a clear-cut definition, it has been the subject of many controversies. The differences of opinion concerning the nature of the soul directly stem from the plethora of meanings attributed to this word. A perfect language would have a unique term for every idea and concept, thus avoiding many debates and arguments and misinterpretations would be impossible. Some define the soul as the principle of organic life, with no existence of its own and ending with the life of the body. According to this belief, otherwise known as materialism, the soul is an effect and not a cause. Others, uh, sorry, thank you. Others believe that the soul is the principle of intelligence the universal agent of which each, each being absorbs a portion. According to this theory, there's only one soul for the entire universe that distributes sparks of itself to all intelligent beings. When these beings die, each spark returns to their common source and rejoins the general whole. Just as streams and rivers flow back to the ocean for which they were originally produced. This opinion differs from the previous belief in that there is something more than matter that resides in us, and it continues to exist even after our death. However, practically speaking, it is as if nothing remains of us after death since all sense of individuality is lost and we lose all perception of our identity. According to this theory, the universal soul is God and each being is a fragment of the supreme being. This is a variation of pantheism. Okay. So, uh, yes, know, yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me in English. Tell me in English. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, to I'm not going to waste much time on these first two uh, definitions of soul because they are rarely used. Almost, almost nobody uses it. But um, first, when we talk about soul, it it's a complicated word because every religion has its own definition of soul, and they vary by each one of them. So for us in spiritism, what is important is the word soul according to spiritism. So when we are here discussing spiritism amongst ourselves, studying spiritism, whenever we say soul, we are using the definition of soul according to spiritism. And we will get there in a second. I'm not going to go there right now, but let's talk a bit about soul a little bit in general. So in, the, in most philosophical, religious and mythological traditions, soul is the incorporeal essence of a li living being, okay? And that's for always, always happens. So the Greek philosophers, they understood the soul uh, as something that 
was besides the physical body. So the soul transcends the physical body. Some Christian denominations and Judaism believes that only humans have immortal souls. Uh, some other religions have different beliefs in the soul, but all of them covers soul uh, in different formats or different origins. Um, you'll find a thousand different definitions. And if you want to go further into it, I recommend that you look for more information on, uh, you know, on encyclopedias because, um, you know, it's such a, it's a word with such widespread definitions and different definitions and each religion will uh, think that their definition of the soul is the correct one and all the others are wrong, like most religions like to, to defend their, their views. Uh, but for us, again, in spiritism, it is important that we find our own definition of soul and we stick with it throughout our studies. Doesn't mean we need to force others outside spiritism or impose to others our definitions. The definition of soul is for ourselves, for our studies with, of spiritism. So whenever we say soul here in studying spiritism, we have a clear definition of what we are talking about. But before we go there, these two, um, two principles that uh, Kardec mentioned here. So the first one that uh, soul is the, some people believe and actually very few people believe that is the principle of organic life with no existence of its own. So uh, the physical body and the soul is one and the same. And whenever the physical body dies, the soul dies also. So this is materialism, basically. The soul, I don't even know why would, would you use the word soul because it's, it's one and the same. You say you could say physical body and that's it. So how much to, to, to go further into this? If the physical body and the soul are the same, once it's dead, it's gone. Now, this one is, has a little bit more, the second one has a little bit more of, of, of believers, which is that we come we are parts of the general whole that God subdivides itself in its creation uh, when we are incarnated or when we are living. And when we die, we were just a spark that manifested in our uh, existence. And when we die, we go back to the general whole. Um, so I com the comparison that he makes here, Kardec, is very good. Streams and rivers flow back to the ocean from which they were original uh, produced. So there is a belief that the very soul, good. that something survives the physical body, but this something goes back to the whole. So the consequence of it, uh, again, for us, spirit is reasoning about it, is that Nothing that you do in your physical life has consequences after you die. Because if you go back to the whole, there is no individual responsibility for your actions. The responsibilities of your actions only exist in the present life. And it's very difficult, very hard to justify the differences that we find in our, our world. People that are born with uh, mental uh, deficiencies, physical deficiencies, People that are rich, people that are poor, people that suffer persecutions because they are different than the others. So it's called, it's a, a, as Kardec says, it's a variation of pantheism, but it's important for us to go through because there are a number of people that believe in this theory, okay? That uh, we are just a spark of the divinity and we go back to the divinity as a whole when we uh when our physical body dies okay any questions here oh okay Paco. let's go okay yet there are people who feel the soul as a moral being completely 
then think and free from matter. These beings preserve its individuality after death. This interpretation of the world is unquestionably the most widely we see. The is an instinctive belief. You are cutting, Paco. You are cutting. In, you are, you are, what? Yeah, you, you, you are cutting. Your, your connection is not very good. Um, it's just me or you, you, this you is, know, it's cutting. I don't we, know. Let's see. Okay. Let's start again. Here as well. It's choppy. Yeah. Yeah, it's choppy. Yeah. It is maybe choppy. We, maybe I should ask uh, Soraya to read because it's, uh, you know, it's cutting a lot, Paco, when you read. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Soraya, can you read? Sure. We'll start off with the yet, okay? Yes, yeah. please. Okay. Yet yeah, there are yeah. people, yet there are people who view the soul as a moral being, completely distinct and free from matter. This being preserves its individuality after death. This interpretation of the word soul is unquestionably the most widely received because the idea of a being surviving the body is an instinctive belief, independent of all teachings evidence of which may be found across all nations, ethnic groups and religions, regardless of their degree of civilization. This doctrine which dictates that the soul is a cause and not an effect is supported by spiritualists. Without delving into the actual merits of these opinions and only taking into consideration the linguistic aspects, these three applications of the word soul derived from three clear-cut ideas, each requiring a different term. Soul, therefore, has a triple significance and is used by each ideology according to a different meaning it attaches to that word. The fault truly lies in the fact that human languages have only one word to convey three ideas. To avoid the confusion that naturally ensues from using the same word, to express three different ideas, the meaning of a soul of soul must be limited to only one of them. It is irrelevant to which idea it is attributed, provided that the choice is clearly understood and agreed upon. In our opinion, the most logical action would be to attribute to the word soul its most widespread and commonly understood meaning, which is why we use it to indicate the immaterial and individual being residing within us that survives the soul. Even if this being did not actually exist and were only a figment of the imagination, a specific term would still be needed for it. Okay. okay. So the third concept, which is the concept that is most generally be generally accepted by the different religions and belief systems, is that the soul uh, is a moral being that is completely distinct and free from matter, and it preserves its individuality after death. Even those that believe that we go to heaven, hell, or purgatory, or wait for the final judgment, or whatever is our destiny after the death of the physical body, believes that the being preserves its individuality. So, and even more, why we have that? Because it's an instinct belief that we bring independent of all, uh, of all uh, rational, of all reason. Um, is when we start reasoning, is, is that when we start finding other uh, concepts, beliefs, or lack of belief. So, uh, First, what Kardec says that uh, unfortunately the word "soul" is, is used in all uh, in all three aspects, and that's unfortunate because we should have words that uh, different words that dif differentiate from uh, different ideas, different terms. So the, the the fault here lies in human languages that have only one word to convey three ideas. And actually, this is not only with the word soul. We are, there are 
several words that uh, we have these problems. And uh, for those that uh, work with translation with different languages, uh, you know, I, there are some words in Portuguese that do not exist in England in English, and I just found word, one word last week in English that does not exist in Portuguese. And, uh, you know, and uh, it's, it's so you, it's sometimes you have to say a lot of words uh, to, to, to explain something that in another language you can say in one word, which is very interesting. Anyways, going back, um, which word is it? Uh, um, for those that watched the, the lecture on Saturday, deadline. That line does not ex exist in Portuguese. Oh, that line. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> if you find the word, yeah, I know we were thinking and I thought a lot. No, prazo is not that line. And the word in Portuguese, uh, the Brazil, all the Brazilians know that does not exist in English is saudade. Uh. Yeah. Which means? Uh, it, it doesn't have a specific translation. It's when you miss something, there is a specific word in Portuguese that does not exist in English. You long for something, you miss something. There is no one word in English. And in Portuguese, there is one word. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Anyways, um, so going back to soul, let's now go to spiritism. Uh, Kardec doesn't cover it here. He's going to cover on, uh, on question 134, but I think it's important for us to understand the definition of soul according to spiritism. So on question 134, Kardec asks the spirit, spirits, what is the soul? And the spirits answer, an incarnated spirit. And then he asks, what was the soul before being united with a body? And the spirits answer, a, sp a spirit. Uh -huh. And then Kardec asks again, are souls and spirits one and the same thing? And the answer from spirits, yes, souls are spirits. Before joining a body, the soul is one of the intelligent beings living in the invisible world. Mm -hmm. It assumes a physical body temporarily to complete its purification and alignment. So, very important here, according to spiritism, whenever we say soul, we are talking about an incarnated spirit. When the spirit in the, is in the spiritual world, it doesn't say here, we call it an errant spirit or a spirit, okay? An errant spirit is a spirit still in evolution that needs reincarnations, hasn't reached perfection but we normally, we just call it spirit, okay? So it is the same thing. The soul before being united with a body, a spirit or an errant spirit. So spirits and souls are one and the same thing. Yes, souls are spirits, but it's important for us all to remember this. In spiritism, whenever we're studying anything in spiritism, when we talk about soul, we're talking about an incarnated spirit. And are talking about spirits in the spiritual world, we refer to errant spirits or just spirits, okay? It's just to make it easier for us. It's not, uh, you know, we're not trying to impose anything. We're not trying to force you to yes, accept sir. anything. It's just for make it easier for us to, when we are studying, to understand and know what we're talking about, okay? Um, May I join? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, it's fantastic that you pointed out uh, uh, the way to use soul and spirit in English because it's different from what we do in Portuguese. Uh, I thank you for that. But uh, wow. what, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, and I want, I'm not going to go into this because this is a one hour thing. Anyway. Uh, I think, not I think, uh, I just wanted to share with you that in my opinion, one of the challenges that we have uh, uh, when trying to learn spiritism is to attribute the correct meaning 
to specific words because spiritism as a whole, in my opinion, uh, borrows words and attributes to them different meanings. And sometimes we might be distracted and confused about those meanings. And it's a challenge to be able to attribute an additional meaning to something. Uh, one example I often use is magnetism. Obviously, when we talk about magnetism uh, in spiritism, we do not mean, you know, uh, refrigerator magnet. It's not the same thing. Uh, nor it is what... Uh, 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 it's described in Maxwell's fourth laws of electromagnetism. It's something else that we that uh, uh, Kardec gave this word at the time, and we carry it with a different meaning. So uh, I, I just wanted to share with you my personal feeling that it's so very important for us to understand the correct meaning of each word we use in Spiritism so that we can better understand, you know, learn more and actually find out what is behind what's being, what's being written and what's being said. Sorry about interrupting, Johnny, but by the way, uh, do you, uh, you are aware that in, in Portuguese, alma and spirit uh, are attributed different meanings than soul and spirit. In, in English, right? Yeah, but going to the original French, which is Lam, uh, the question here is, uh, it's an incarnated spirit in the original French. So we're, we're, that's why we're going to, again, it's choices that we make, and I agree with you, that, but uh, in our studies, we're going to use uh, soul as an incarnated spirit because it makes it easier for us to to discuss it. We, we, we went over this the last time we started studying the Spirit's book. We don't went over this again. And I, I know that in Portuguese, um, Alma is a little bit uh, different of, uh, of, of what is so exactly. But uh, again, we cannot, yeah, we cannot start mixing all languages here on top of dif difficult concepts also. Exactly. But, but neither yeah, yeah, right yeah. or wrong. That's true. The important thing is that we understand the concept behind it. There's a guy named Chomsky. Chomsky is one of the modern linguistics, uh, and he attributes an enormous value to the content of a word. And I think for us as spiritists, this is central because we are talking about things, we are learning about things that we sometimes we don't experience them ourselves while incarnated. So if we don't grasp a good meaning of what it is, we get very, very, we can get very, very confused. Anyway, sorry about interrupting, but yeah, I think no. it is such an important point. Yes, and uh, and that's why I brought it because I think it's important for us to 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 speak in the same language. So here, whenever we're talking about the soul, we are using question one thirty four, which is an incarnated spirit. Um, which makes it easier when we call a spirit in the spiritual world a spirit. We are all spirits. And I know, um, I know, uh, I was talking to Sara actually about this, and uh, she said that Orlando keeps complaining that uh, we call an incarnated spirit a soul because he, he wants uh, to call everything a spirit, you know. And, you know, it's not wrong. We are all spirits, uh -huh. yeah. incarnated, discarnated, but. Uh, if we need words to differentiate and we need words to, to know what we're talking about. That's why we're uh, very uh, posh, cautious in making these distinctions here. But may I ask, now that you open this door, uh, do you have in English different words for uh, the spark that we are together with the perispirit and just a spark, or do you have one word for both? Uh, we we have only only one word for both. Uh, so the spirit is the 
you know, we'll have the spirit plus the peri spirit. It's called the spirit. <laughs> That's challenging yes. when teaching. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes, but there is no word for uh, for the spirit without the peri spirit. As far as I know, Elmo, help me here. Do we? I don't think so, right? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, it was uh, Julio who likes to use the term at the essence. The yes. essence, yes. yes. But that was Julius' mm -hmm. choice. He yeah. used the word the essence. The essence plus the peri spirit makes the spirit. Yeah. Danny, you had a question for a long time. Sorry. Uh, so the spirit is then, you said, the the um, we use for errant spirits, like the ones who need reincarnation. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't be right to call Jesus as a perfect spirit then? A per Jesus is a perfect spirit, yes. He didn't need reincarnation. He also, incarnated on a errant mission. Is the, errant is the adjective or it's the, the, the word that changes the meaning. Like errant? spirit needs reincarnation, but uh, you can also call a spirit or a perfect spirit who does not need the reincarnation. You call per per call perfect or perfected, like Julio, you like to call oh. perfected spirit. Yes, it's no longer an errant spirit. Oh, an okay. errant spirit is a spirit that is in the spiritual world between reincarnations. We can call them Christs. The perfect spirits, yes. We can call them Christs also if you want, yeah. And, and again, uh, we should spend as much time we need here. We need to understand the basics. These are important words for us to understand and to agree upon, because that's what we're going to be studying. I don't, you know, we don't want uh, uh, someone uh, in, uh, in six months time to ask what is so exactly? <laughs> we're going, when we get there, we're going to talk about it again. Question 134. But uh, it's important for us to understand the concepts. So, so, is, uh, is, uh, is an incarnated spirit for the purpose of our studies. So is an incarnated spirit. A spirit, an errant spirit, is a spirit between incarnations that is in the spiritual world. And a perfected spirit or a perfect spirit or a Christ is a spirit that no longer re needs reincarnations and it's uh, working with God in the creation, co-creation of the universe, if you want to to ask what they are doing. Yes. Um, so um, where I was, yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I also want to mention uh, science, right? Because according to science, the soul does not exist. Yeah. So modern scientists hold that the mind is merely a complex machine that operates on the same physical laws as all other objects in the universe. There is also considerable evidence that seems to indicate that the soul does not exist. These are what scientists, some scientists are saying out there. Um, but the search for the soul has always been instrumental in driving the understanding of the human body. So even science denies the existence of the soul it does not discard it completely because sometimes they have to, to go back to it. Um, there is also a study that um, was done in the beginning of the 20th century uh, where an, uh, a, a scientist weighed the, a patient right before dying and after dying and found that the soul weighed 21 grams. It was never been, they were never able to replicate it or to confirm or to deny it. Uh, other experiences had conflicting results, but it's, you know, it's an, uh, an interesting uh, ex experiment. There is even a movie called 21 Grams. Yeah, that, uh, is, yeah. Is exactly I remember talk, that. Yeah, it talks about uh, death and all these this mm -hmm. issues. A very good movie. It's a, it's a heavy one, but a good one. Uh, so just for you to know, if someone tried to measure how uh, to weight how much the the the, the soul uh, weighted and uh, found 21 grams, but that's not uh, proved or anything. Um, 
So going back here, so uh, we now we're going to go into different terms that are also complex, but uh, we're going to that are important to 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 spiritism. Sorry, but Ravenato, yes, go ahead. I uh, just want to clarify as well. Since you mentioned that the spirit and the per spirit they are only one word for the the package, so the mind is also included in that. Uh, well, again, <laughs> complicated because uh, if you if you talk uh, of 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 those that um, that think that we have different bodies that the peri spirit is subdivided in different uh, in different um, layers like an onion which is not a very good comparison mm -hmm. but it's one that is uh, used and it's not you know actually it's it's easier for us to understand you you have the mental body and that is where we will find the mind because how can a peri spirit someone a spirit in the spiritual world uh, practice mediumship and mediumship exists in the spiritual world so how it how is it used uh, you could say that is through the through the mental body right so it's complex it goes beyond the the simple definitions thanks um, just before we go there uh, I forgot that I, I wanted to mention Aristotle, which I thought it was very interesting. According to Aristotle, there were three different um, souls, let's say. Uh, he defined the ve vegetative soul, which were the plants that you find in the plants that had only reproduction and growth. Then when you went to animals, you had a sensitive soul where you already have mobility and sensation. And then only when you reach humans is when you have, you have the rational soul, when you have thought and reflection. And you see, this is Aristotle uh, 380 to 320 before the common era. Common era. And, uh, and we are still discussing two, two, 2,500 years later and not being able to reach any uh, common uh, path, common conclusion. Um, I was just asked if there is a dictionary for all these concepts. If you find, if you go to the International Spiritist Con uh, Council website, the SAI website, uh, you will find a uh, recently published glossary in seven languages that Jusara compiled with the help with many other people but it was just published. So you'll find there the glossary for all spiritist mm -hmm. terms in, I think, I'm not sure if seven or five, I think five different languages, Portuguese, English, Spanish, French, Italian, and German. So you can go there and, and find the glossary, okay? Okay. So let's try okay. to see if we can finish this. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure because there is a lot of complex things there. Go ahead. Okay. Given the lack of a specific term for each of the other two ideas, we use. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. We use the term vital principle to define the material in organic life that is coming to all living beings, regardless, regardless of its source from plants to humankind. As life can exist when a being does not have the ability to, drink, to think, the vital principle is a distinct and independent element. The, ver the word vitality does not express the same idea. According to, the, to some, the vital principle is a property of matter produced wherever matter is found under specific conditions. In contrast, most believe that it resides in a special universally cir circulated fluid of which each being absorbs a portion during life. This effect can be compared to how inert bodies absorb life. This is the vital fluid, which is generally regarded as being the same as the animalized electric fluid, also known 
as magnetic fluid, nervous fluid, and so on. Regardless, one fact proven by observation is certain. Orga organic beings possess an intrinsic force that for as long as it is present, produces the phenomenon of life. All organic beings possess this physical life, which is independent of intelligence and thought. Intelligence and thought are faculties belonging to select organic species. And among those gifted with intelligence and thought, only one possesses a special moral sense that renders it indisputably superior over all others, human beings. Because it has mo multiple meanings, the term soul excludes either materialism nor pantheism. Spiritualists themselves understand soul to have one of the first two definitions without denying the distinct immaterial being to which it would give another name. This word does not represent an opinion. Rather, it is a versatile term defined by each individual according to his or her own school of thought. As such, this is an endless source of dispute. Confusion. Okay, um, it's, yeah, let's finish this one. Okay, confusion could be avoided by adding a descriptive term when using the word soul in three cases defined above. That would specify the perspective or the manner in which we apply it. This word would be generic, representing the principles of material life, intelligence, and moral judgment, each of which would be distinguished by a specific feature or characteristic. This method is employed, for instance, for the word gas by adding the words hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen. Therefore, we could say, and perhaps it would be the best approach, vital soul for the principle of material life, intellectual soul for the principle or intelligence of intelligence, and spiritual soul for the principle of our individuality after death. This is merely a question of words, but it is crucial for ensuring clarity and understanding. In this case, the vital soul will belong to all organic beings, plants, animals, and humans. The intellectual soul would specifically belong to animals and humans, and the spiritual soul would belong to humankind alone. It is very important to be explicit in regard to this point, because spiritism is naturally based on the existence of a being inside us, inside us that is completely independent of matter and that, that lives on after the body has succumbed to death. The word soul appears frequently throughout this work. Therefore, it is critical to define the meaning that we attach to it, to avoid any potential disputes or misunderstandings. We can now belong, move along to the main object of this preliminary explanation. When I was studying this, I thought about you, Paco, said in English, please, right? <laughs> Um, so first, uh, I you know why Kardec jumps from soul to vital principle principle here. Uh, I went to the Portuguese, I went to the French version. It's a slightly different uh, the the Portuguese version, which is the mm -hmm. best version, uh, because uh, he said in Portuguese he says given the lack of a specific term for each of the other two ideas of the definition of soul we use the term vital principle but the in french is is exactly as it was translated here so he goes from soul to vital principle which is actually what animates the soul right uh, when we, we we are incarnated we every living being and that goes from plants to animals to to humans are animated by the vital principle and by you know uh, by uh, by the vital fluid which is uh, again it comes from the universal fluid or from the cosmic fluid and animates the living beings in the physical world 
uh, they is called here also uh, animalized electric fluid, magnetic fluid, nervous fluid, and so on. That is what Kardec points out here. But then, you know, he goes explaining why we are all animated by that. And then, uh, and again, he goes back to soul and, uh, and, and the importance of us using the term soul to define uh, what we are studying here. Whenever we use the term soul, we talk, uh, we don't confuse it with the definitions of soul used in other uh, belief systems in other religions. Uh, but uh, he mentions here a, a little bit when he goes into the, the principle of material life when he uses vital soul and then intellectual soul for the principle of intelligence and spiritual soul for the principle of our individuality after death. That's when I, I, I find the relation to what Aristotle uh, defined as vegetative soul, sensitive soul, and rational soul, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, three souls mm -hmm. from three different uh, aspects of, uh, of living um, beings, in beings, plants, animals, or humans. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, these are all words. But the most important thing as we come to the end of this uh, study today is for us to understand the definition and the use of the words in spiritism. We don't need to understand the use of the word because if we are trying to understand soul as it's used everywhere, we are going to, to find a thousand different oh, definitions it. of soul. Yeah. So we need to stick to what we know uh, on, on what we use in spiritism as soul, which is an incarnated spirit. Uh, when we we use the other definitions of soul as kardec himself is using here in the as vital soul intellectual soul and spiritual soul um we spiritism and eventually we'll find that before becoming an a spirit we use spiritual principle again to differentiate so we are created in the very uh, origin as a spiritual principle and as a spiritual principle we go through the different phases the the mineral the vegetable and the animal until you, we reach individuality uh, and we become a spirit when we have our first incarnation uh, it is said that uh, we are an individual spiritual principle already in the letters later stages of the animal kingdom so uh, a dog a cat the mammals are considered individual spiritual principles but again it's definitions that we use and uh, we try to apply to our studies to make it uh, to 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 separate as uh, julio used to say right we like we, we like to to put things inside boxes because it makes it easier for us to understand the problem is when we keep the boxes separate from each other because we have to they are all one and the same it's just a matter of our studying and understanding the differences right and um if anyone has any question question otherwise... here. yes go ahead Luis. Uh, uh i ask you english-speaking guys uh is there a meaning in spiritus for the often used expression immortal soul in English? Um, immortal soul? I don't know. It's immortal soul. What? What? <laughs> Why you need another one? But I, I've heard it so many times. But if I understand well, there's no meaning for that expression in English because soul is an incarnated spirit. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're exactly. talking about spiritism? Yes, exactly. Because it means. Um, I don't think we use immortal soul in spiritism. We okay. spirit immortal. Yeah, I, yeah, I've heard the expression so many times in English. Something to your immortal soul, immortal soul here, immortal soul there. I mean, yeah, so we, yeah, but 
if you apply, if you apply that to spiritism, what we're actually saying is immortal spirit. spirit. Yeah, yeah. That's so what it, exactly. We <laughs> we every time every time we say immortal soul, that's what that's what we mean. That as as a, the soul as a spirit, we never die. Okay, so I'll never use it in the spirit. I'm, I'm trying to convey. I'm trying to convey to you, to the best of my ability, what we mean with when we say immortal souls. But if we yeah. if we apply what we have learned from spiritism, then what we are referring to is immortal spirits. And in spiritism, we use we use immortal spirit. Yeah, we okay. much more. You find you may find we, we would say immortal spirits. spirits yes. <laughs> You may find people using immortal souls, but for the purpose of, 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 of us here, we should use immortal spirit because the spirit is, is immortal. Exactly, right? exactly. Uh, for the purpose of spiritism. Yeah. yeah, well, eternal is God, but immortal. Um, once created, has no end. Okay, right? Anyone else? Okay. That was my own, my own interpretation. That doesn't mean that it's the truth, you know? Yeah, but yeah, but you were you were right. It, and, and again, um, this beginning of the spirits book, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of building blocks, but it's important that we build blocks. It's build, important for us to understand the concepts, the basic concepts. Uh, we're going now into the next next week. We're going to talk a little bit about how Kardec started uh, Spiritism and uh, the, the 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 turning tables and everything. But uh, but it's it's also is interesting to. To, to go through the, the, the process, the beginning of the process uh, according to Kardec and described it by Kardec. Okay. So um, for this weekend, um, on Saturday, actually this didn't come on our uh, weekly mail because uh, it, 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 it came, the, the announcement came after it, but we have a very interesting um, lecture this Saturday our friend Marcelo Medeiros, you know him. We, he's been, uh, he was part of the Inner Enlightenment and uh, he gave a lecture at, at SGNY uh, a couple of years ago. And um, Marcelo is a reporter that uh, used to work for, uh, for, uh, for the, a couple of Brazilian TVs here in New York. And now he's working for CNN in Atlanta. And uh, he's going to be talking about gossiping in the times of Jesus and now, a spiritist view on social media. I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting uh, lecture subject to, for us to, to learn. So this is Thursday, 11 a.m. on the uh, US Spiritist Federation YouTube channel, Facebook channel, and on TVSA channel, okay? 11 a.m. And uh, on Sunday, this is the third Sunday of the month, we'll be studying uh, on the way to the light, okay? Um, we are going to ask, we're going to ask, or either, oh, no, we are going to ask Anna to do our final prayer. Anna, can you do it? Go ahead, Anna. We cannot hear you, Anna. Sorry, I've been talking here and <laughs> it's hey, the, other, the other speaker, I'm sorry. <laughs> With much gratitude, we thank our guiding spirits, our master Jesus, and Kardec for this wonderful book that we start again today, for all the lessons that are being brought for our discussion and enlightenment. We also thank the opportunity to be together once more and appreciate how lucky we are to be in good health in good spirits, in good company, and be able to learn from each other. And with that, 
We ask permission to close this part of the session. So be it. <laughs>